Hello there. Chatbots and voice assistants are one of the most important tools in today's and especially in tomorrow's world. But who are the people behind them? The ones that make them work? The conversation designers. My name is Aran Soroka, head of marketing for CocoHub.ai. Today we travel virtually to Buenos Aires uh, to meet with a nut apple, semi-senior UX writers in Mercado Libre. Right? Did I pronounce it right? <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Thank you. Buenos dias. Um, Buenos dias. I'm very happy to, to be here. I'm very glad. Thank you very much for your invitation. Great. So first of all, how did you become a conversation designer before uh, making it to the UX design? Yeah, you know, there's a, like a strange or um, a very nice thing that is that we are all conversational designers as we design our conversation on our daily basis. So we are born naturals. So the only thing that you have to do in the process is like get some tools. But I started writing uh, from, I don't know, I always love to write. And then uh, I started as a conversational designer as soon as I got into UX and the, the design of experiences for um, customers and users. I don't, I don't, I am not very fond of calling them like customers or users, they're persons. We have been involved in conversations and we are involved all the time. So, yeah. And what's the most of project uh, you're most proud of? Um, that's a uh, nice question. I think it would be the implementation of natural language processing inside the um, the IVR of at and it, it is a new technology and it involved a lot of um, knowledge and technical knowledge aside from, you know, the, the writing knowledge of the UX. Uh, so that should be the one, yeah. Okay, how tough is it? Uh, because you're in Latin America and there's a lot of accents and jargons and how hard is it um, to handle all of this to, to you know, to make it work? That's a, an interesting question. Um, uh, the, the AI uh, tools that we use are uh, specifically Nuance and Watson, and they are like, you have some train, some pre-work, some pre-training that they have, and, and you have to also feed them and train them in order to understand different um, jargons and, and accents, you know? So it was very interesting to, and it was very frustrating also for the persons to try to get them to, the machine to understand them. And at the beginning, it's very difficult because you have like, a, I don't have to say that, you have like an apprentice uh, learning, a learning curve, you know? Yeah. It's like in the beginning, it's really difficult for, for the machine to learn. And then it like, it goes off. So um, it flies, you know? So uh, for the beginning, it was very frustrating, but afterwards it was like a smooth process, but it also has challenges. Uh, it still has challenges to understand, um, but it, it happens in all the languages, you know? All the big languages at, at least. Yeah, but when, the, the, when a customer or a person yeah, starts a, a conversation with the voice assistant, for example, the voice assistant doesn't know in advance, right? Uh, like what accent will the person speak or does it like have to understand it from the first word it says or how it works? The thing is, if you, if you don't understand, like, like we are as persons, if I don't understand you, I say like, what are you saying to me? I'm sorry, can you repeat? The machine does the same thing. So... The, the thing that happened was that on the first time, the user tends, tended to, the persons used it to um, uh, say out loud, like whatever, uh, we, with our accent, with our personal ways of saying it. On the second time, if, if the machine didn't understood, uh, understand, the, um, the person was like a lot of, like gentle, you know, like more gentle to it. And it's uh, like, uh, slower and clearer so it will understand so the second time is like more probable than the machine understood what the person was saying uh, we tend to do it that it's it's like a, a social um, characteristic or, or thing that we do normally in a social environment so the same thing happened with the IVR okay what's the most important thing for a voice assistant when you create one 
Um, I think the most important thing for a voice assistant as well as any other assistant chat or chatbot is to find, like, uh, uh, there are lots of stuff, but I think to find the sweet spot between being a robot and being a person. Mm -hmm. it, it's not quite, it's not quite natural for you as a person to interact with a machine and be like thinking that you're speaking to a person. That's like a, a really strange thing to do. That it's a really bit, a bit of cringe, you know? You're not a person, so. Um, but on the other hand, you don't want to be too robotic. So you want a machine that can understand what the person is saying and be empath empathetic with the person, but at the same time, not too person, because sometimes we have the cases of people that wants to speak to other people. And that, that are the cases that a machine cannot solve what the problem is. I mean, I think that sweet spot may be the most important thing. And it applies to chatbots too. Yeah, things seems like a thin line to walk and that you had yeah. a lot of fun experimentation. Is there like a specific anecdote you, you vividly remember from that? I didn't have the chance to experience one on my job. I yeah, as a as a person using these kinds of, of platforms. Yeah, I think like um sometimes when i have like a bank account you know so i uh i always prefer chatbots because i think some of the questions that i have are easily um solved with a chatbot but sometimes they're like uh hi i'm i don't know a name you know like i'm sophia how are you um these are my choices and then I, I try to write or to speak naturally and Sophia doesn't understand me. She wants me to like find a number and tell them like one. And most of the time, the options that it presents to me are not the options that I would like to know. So um, if you are Sophia, so let me speak to you like most more close like if you're a person, not with numbers. I think that you have to like understand the technologies that you can own, then uh, develop a chatbot with a personality. But it's like, it's like a thin line, uh, but I, I celebrate all the, the progress missed in this sense, you know, in, um, in this area. Do human agents even love voice assistants or, or chatbots? Because in a sense, they are coming to help them, but in a sense, they may be afraid that uh, it will uh, replace them one day. But... Um, Like, how, how, how is the dynamics between the, the human agents and the conversational agents that you create? Yeah, I, I don't think that the people are scared. I think that the, the conversational design and the AI involved is had, uh, have made their work better, you know, because they have, like, some information that has already been processed before it comes to them. And um, some, and they also work with the tool to straighten it, to feed it. And they also like consult it. The Watson is not only for us as persons using the, 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 the conversation um, platform. It's also for the CS, for the contact center to know the information that the users are setting. So it, it um, if something, it, uh, strong it made the work easier i think maybe there's a fear but i think that most of it all it was a very um a very nice tool for them to have okay if somebody wants to <clears throat> first of all you talked about you your new website conversational writer can you speak a bit um about the differences and the similarities between like doing those things yeah of course uh Conversational design, it, it all, all depends on where do, do you work and what are, what are the tools that you have. Nowadays, I work uh, for Mercado Libre. That's a huge company. We have like very specific types of, of job. Me as a US writer, I barely use other tools or I barely touch other fields. You know, the 
programmers are a team. I work with a designer. We design together the experience, that, but this is very specific role inside the design process. Me, as a conversational designer, I got more in touch with the artificial intelligence tool with more like machine learning and more you have in some way you have to be in touch with other tools that are uh, that are not your speciality you know this I think this may be the main uh, difference that I see be, between being a UX writer that you also have to have access to a lot of information from design and visual design information and conversation yeah you have like this constant um, dialogue with machine learning and tools that as a writer I didn't imagine that I would have to like interact with these kinds of tools yeah if somebody wants to become a conversation designer uh, what tips can you give them where to start I think the main thing is always keep the person in mind um, that is I think for every human centered designer um, but I think if you have that in mind you cannot make uh, you cannot make mistakes I mean you can make mistakes you cannot um, get far from the objective that is designing experiences for the users to get where they want to I mean it's all the same it had different context um content I'm sorry yeah uh but yeah I think that would be okay um are you there are, how is how big is the community of conversation designers in Argentina in, in Latin America is it I think it's very small yeah um as a convert as a conversational designer I understood the the I mean the I didn't know what it was until I was working in it. <laughs> so it's very new. It's a very new role. It's growing, but it's actually pretty small. Okay. Or, uh, and last thing, um, do you have any forecast, any vision for the future of uh, conversational AI, voice interfaces? Yeah, I have a lot of forecasts. And sometimes I, I am, often I am uh, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> there's no wrong there's maybe like you you said it and it will happen like later but never <laughs> find <anything. laughs> yeah it's it's a way of, of seeing it like I'm very futuristic you know um I like I I think some in an occasion I I speak about it um we are constantly seeing bomb like it's a bomb of visual information and visual uh, yeah lots lots of information that comes through your, your eyes you know I'm I see like a great future for voice interfaces as we are more often involved in situations that we cannot use our hands you know like driving or using our bikes to to move through the city or just you know having the the cell phone in your pocket and your your earpods your airpods and I think there's a big opportunity for voice interfaces as we interpret the, the context of a person and and the inability to continue to look at screens and continue to use our hands to do everything I think you As it gets better as the assistant the voice assistant gets better and the machine learning and natural language processing gets better uh, it's a big opportunity for for these kinds of interfaces I don't think human uh, can, humans can be replaced with machines I in any in any yeah there are things that when you want to speak to a person you want to speak to a person and that's it that there's no interface that can solve it for you. So I think it has a big opportunity, but yeah, so I'm, I'm cautious about it. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was a wonderful conversation. So first of all, thank you very much, Ina Tappel from uh, Mercado Libre. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And uh, for everybody watching or listening, uh, go check up CocoHub.ai where you can create uh, bots with a human touch and to create your own um, voice, textual or video chat. What? In literal minutes 
Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.